Today we're going to look at CHOPS, which is short for Channel Operators. And to understand this, you need to know what a channel is. A channel is just a list of numbers. For example, in motion, you might have one number showing the position of something for each frame. So you might have 24 numbers per second. For an audio channel, you might have 48,000 numbers per second if you recorded at 48 kilohertz. So when you hear channel, just think a list of numbers. So to get started, we have this purple sphere, and we're just going to move it along the x-axis. So we're going to start at x equals negative 10, set a keyframe, alt-left click. We're going to go to the end of the standard 10 seconds here and move it to positive x equals 20, alt-left click to add a keyframe. And let's play this back. And we have a little bit of motion here. Nothing terribly exciting, but it works. We set two keyframes and the ball moves. So let's go to the beginning. If you move your mouse over the translate parameter, you'll see it, it lists three parameters, TX, TY, TZ. So actually each one of these is a channel. It's highlighted green because we set a keyframe at that point in time. If you go to any other frame, it's blue, it's being interpolated. But when you go to the end, it turns green again, letting you know there's a keyframe there. You can visualize the motion if you'd like by going to the animation editor tab. It gives you these little handles if you'd like to make it get rid of the sl slow acceleration and deceleration if you'd like. It, you can kind of control that. But this lets you know how the value of this TX channel changes over time. Okay, now let's get rid of everything we just did and let's use chops to do something similar. We went to the beginning. If we right click here, you'll see one of the options is delete channels. So we are going to delete the TX channel that we created. It leaves it at a starting position, which is negative 10. So let's reset that to zero. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to create a chop network. Let's call this ball mover, because what this chop network is gonna do is it's gonna contain some channel operators that is going to move the ball. Previously with keyframes, the motion was attached to the ball. Here we're going to design the motion separately from the geometry, then connect them. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create some channel data and let's create a wave. To see this, we're going to come up to the motion FX view tab. You'll notice I have kind of a very simplified workspace set up with only those things that we're going to need for this example, the scene view, the animation editor for viewing keyframes and the motion FX view. So if we click this node, this one chop, nothing shows up. That's because we need to click the blue. Now you can see we have this wave generated by this chop. You can actually come in here and there's little handles. You'll see phase, you'll see period, you'll see amplitude and you'll see Chan one. That's the name of this channel data. If you grab the period here, you can control how basically the frequency, the amplitude is how tall or how short you want it. Let's go up to make something relatively tall and not that fast. The phase is kind of like, where does this wave start? Does it start in the usual zero and going up position, which is what sine, sine waves do, or you can just move it left and right until you get the starting position that you want. Now, one thing you can do with the wave chop that you can't see here is this decay rate. If you look at this parameters panel, if you increase the decay, this waviness will slowly, it's kind of like a spring that's, you know, kind of losing its bounce due to friction. So let's do that. Let's have the, the bounciness slowly decay. And let's increase the amplitude a little bit more. You can see this nice little decay of the amplitude here. So here we can see a wave in the motion FX view. If you go to the animation editor, there's nothing. You don't see anything. If you go to the scene view, the purple balls sitting there doing what purple balls do, and that is nothing unless you tell it to. So let's come back to the motion FX view. What we would like to do is say, hey, why don't we take this channel data and attach it to the ball? The way you can do that is select an export node. And with the export node, you specify what channels do you wanna export? 
there's the asterisk, which is everything, or Chan 1. Well, Chan 1 is the name of this channel, this waviness. And let's give it a more meaningful name. You have to select on this. Notice there's three tabs here. There's waveform, channel, and common. Common, by the, by the way, allows you to change the color of the graph in the motion FX view. But let's come here to the channel tab. And let's change this name to wiggle. Now, when you come over and look in the motion FX view, you'll see the name is wiggle. So let's come down to the export name and say, let's export the wiggle channel. Let's get rid of that asterisk at the beginning. And it wants to know, well, which node do you want to put this data on? So let's click this. And we are going to export it to the ball node. Now, filled in the path to TX by default, but you can change that to whatever you want. But for now, let's export this data to the TX parameter value. It's active, so let's see what happens. If you come to the scene view and play, nothing. It might be a little anticlimactic. Oh my goodness, it couldn't be that easy. Well, it almost is. If you come back to the Motion FX view tab, let's go full screen here so you can get a nice big view. So the wave chop, generates the decayed wave data, the export exports it to the ball, but before it actually exports it, you have to come down here and click the export flag. And notice the color of this, this color is important. Okay, let's leave full screen, go back to the scene view and play. There we go. So that decay, the slow uh, wiggle back and forth, that slowly comes to a stop has been attached to the TX value of the sphere. We can actually say, change our mind and say, we'd like to export this not to TX, but how about to TY. Now we play it back. You see that waviness has been applied to the TY position of the TY parameter of this purple ball. By the way, if you want to get really fancy, you can say export the wiggle channel data to both TX and TY. That's kind of a nifty thing. So, but for now, let's stick with TX. It's just wiggling back and forth in the X direction. So let's go up a level. Let's select the ball and look at the TX value here. It is highlighted this kind of golden color. And remember, if you come back to the chop, that's the color of this export flag. So this is letting you know that for this ball, the TX parameter is under the control of a chop, some channel operators. And you might think, well, that's good and all, but how do you know who's controlling it? Which chop is actually responsible for the motion? Because you might have literally dozens of chops. If you right click, come down to more, you can view dependencies, expand this, and for the ball TX parameter, it lets you know which um, part of which chop is actually exporting its data, copying it over to the TX. There's another way you can find that that's a little faster. If you right click the TX, go to Motion FX, and say jump to Motion FX Network. There we go. It jumps right to the node that's actually exporting the data to the TX parameter for the ball. By the way, if you come up, let's go full screen again, control B. If you come up to the wave chop and click on the information, you'll see that it says it has just one channel and it's generating 24 numbers or 24 samples per second. That's what they call a number, they call it a sample. And the name is Wiggle. And there's some other interesting things here as well. It lets you know there's 240 numbers total because it's a 10 second, 24 frames per second animation. The samples go from zero to 239. That's how they're indexed, but the frames are one to 240. Now what I would like to show you is what happens if you have both keyframes and chops kind of competing over how to move something. And to do this, let's go into the chop, go to the export node and unclick the active checkbox. When we do that, come back to the ball and you'll notice that the TX parameter is no longer golden. And if we play this back, the ball doesn't move anymore. So if you're experimenting with using a chop to control the motion of something, you can turn it on and off by using the active check checkbox. Active, it's going to take control of the ball. If you uncheck it, it's no longer going to make any changes.
let's return to the ball and do what we did in the beginning. So that is a keyframe one. Let's set TX to be negative 10. Set a keyframe, alt click. Go to the end, change the X position to positive 10 and set a keyframe, alt click. Play it back. And there we go. It slowly moves 20 meters in the positive X direction. There we go. And notice how the background color here is green. That's because it's under the control of a keyframe. There's a keyframe here, and that's what's responsible. But look what happens if we go into the chop network, take the export node, and activate it again. The ball jumped to the origin. Let me uncheck that so you can see it. It started at negative 10 when we were using keyframes, but the moment we turned on the chop export node, the chop is in control. If you go up and click on the ball, look at the background. It's now golden. Even if you're at frame one where there's a keyframe and frame 240 where we set a keyframe, it doesn't matter. The chop overrides the keyframes. So we go to the beginning and play it back. We get the dampened oscillation. Now, what happens if we come over to our chop network and export it not to TX but TY? Look what happened to the ball. So we initially, if we're applying it to TX, the starting position is zero. You know, although we had a keyframe of TX to be negative 10, this overrode it. If we change this to TY, now the starting Y position is zero, but it, re it reverts back to the keyframes that we set for the sphere. You come up here, click on the ball, and notice we have green for the TX because the TX position is being controlled by the keyframes and the interpolation between it. And TY is now golden because the Y coordinate is now going to be changed by the chop. If we play this back, can you guess what it's going to do? Yes, it's kind of oscillating up and down while slowly moving in the positive X direction. So in summary, the really neat thing about chops is that it allows you to kind of create your own motion data that's not attached to any geometry. So you could come up here and come up with a lot of different motions that you might want to have and fine tune it. And that way you can reuse it on a lot of different geometries. So a lot of people, when you start using Houdini, are used to creating the geometry and then using keyframes on the geometry to move it so that the motion and the geometry are all kind of bundled together. Chops, in this case, allows us to have the motion separate from the geometry. I hope this helps, and next time we'll get a little bit fancier with chops.